is ours. Good evening, good evening, good evening, and welcome to another exciting propaganda cast with me, your host, Imperial Dane, Master of Propaganda, Hero of the Reich, Defender of the Fallen. You're here watching Stu playing as a contemptible Rodina, the Soviet Union, and Kimbo Mudslides playing for the Dastardly Brits. Thank you, Dane, and uh, pleasure to have you here co-casting. They're going to be up against Nagano in the south side of Crossing in the Woods, playing as the OKW. His teammate uh, will be Scotch, and this team is just starting their comeback after 2-0 in this series uh, to try and get the next three games in a row. Big thanks to Dane for his cameo there. Dane Gishuch represents Stern Pioneers here on the west side capping fuel, going straight for the fuel, not even bothered to connect. Nagan, of course, one of the most successful OKW players ever to play the damn game itself. His teammate Scotch, Vermont crossing in the woods. You would bank on them to win this one and to drag everybody into the fifth game of this best of five series um, it's looking possible let's have a look yep and uh, Kimbo and Stu by the way just want to note that they've already selected their commanders right now uh, Kimbo Manslice is going to go for the uh, engineer regiment which gives him the AVRE like we saw before Stu uh, with armored assault and we've been saying this all day but it's purely at the start game to get this radio intercept they're going to be able to know what the allies are building and bringing onto the field but then uh, late so game access. it's a, a combination of these Oh, let's watch this Tommy. Oh, and the folks going right here. Tale of two one-man retreats there. One soft, one hard. Oh, they might still... Nope, they're focusing the wrong squad there, so... Mm. But want? also late game, of course, you do have the Sturmoviks and the IS-2s. What's going on here? Well, combat engineers are trying to get into that triangle, but they're trapped now. Like a cat in a bag. What are they going to do? They're just providing little bits of sniper sight. though. Yes. The snow they were they were it was a trap. The sniper was firing all that time. That was pretty decent. What is this model still doing here? This is dangerous. It's very dangerous. Kimbo is a madman unchained. Oh, I like this. Mines there being planted uh, on the flanking route. And uh, obviously they're expecting the grenadiers to come around and have a poke oh. at the sniper. What's uh, that sniper? She's under a little bit of duress now. Grens are on the hunt. Look at that. Uh, woman hunting her down. Oh, oh takes a nice sneaky shot, gets away relatively scot-free. The combat engineers are finally going to have to relinquish their position under the focused fire of those MP40s. And you come the stern pioneers. Yeah, they all sensible decision here to close this unit whilst it's uh, going to have a retreat path right past them. Um, that going to end the retreat. I think that squad's going to be okay. Engineers there with a very low retreat. There's a lot going on at the start of this game. Great a lot battle. of late retreats. These players are really warmed up now. This is game four. It's the fourth game they've played today. And of course, as everybody knows, it's for 10K. The winners share that amount between them. They get 5K each. That's $5,000 forever. And for Nagano, that's a hell of a lot of money. For all of these players, a hell of a lot of money. We've got students. We've got Kimbo, I think, ju just turned 18. Imagine being 18 with five grand to spend in Poland. That's a hell of a lot of Zvoti. And, uh, you know, he's going to have a good time. Probably... All right. Would, I would buy such a monstrous PC with 5K. <laughs> What's that new NVIDIA 10 million GTX with ray tracing and seven pistons or whatever it is? I'd buy that. Five of them, actually, in parallel. Just to play Company Heroes 2 on. Oh. Be a, a dream setup, I think. Future investments. <laughs> Absolutely. Here we go. We've got uh, the MG42. Although known by Americans in the war as Hitler's buzzsaw because of its hor horrendous sound it made. Such a high rate of fire. It made the Allied machine guns sound pedestrian compared to it. Oh, this is uh, glad they got into the building there. Tommy's uh, looked like they were maybe going to hop in and lock down that area outside of the base. You see uh, Nagano coming over here to help Scotch get control of his side. They know the sniper's over here. And uh, let's hope there's some communication between Steve and Kimbo so they can start making the retreat now. Here we go, folks, Grenadier. Cohesive, gelatinous, homogenous tactical battle group in full effect. Stern Pioneers, folks, Grenadiers for days. Pioneers waiting behind the logs to battle them. <laughs> Yeah, I like the idea of the Stone Pioneers just popping around the corner there. Close range DPS on the Ping Battalions. The Volks when it is, I think, should have been focusing uh, the other Ping Battalion squad. But why did they retreat here? Oh, 
They'd retreated because I, I just don't think it was a fortuitous engagement. They were pushing into nothing. There was no uh, advantage to be held, and they were fearful of possible machine gun fire, I believe. And not that there was any. They were just uh, po possibly... Possible that Nagano doesn't want to lose the left-hand side of the map as well. He's taking all his forces over there, so help. Uh, Scotch, get over here and secure, and then uh, and then leave. Well, that's kind that's of like the uh, mysterious stranger in Fallout. <laughs> do you know what I mean? It's <laughs> like uh, it's a little bit of a chance for uh, units to appear, help you out, and then. then well, do you know what? Off. This this fact this this map is so wide. Using the uh, retreat mechanism to go all the way back to base and then go to the, the left mm. is a safe way to traverse the map sideways, probably. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know the old uh, three-point maneuver <laughs> coming into full effect there. <laughs> Axis are going to be locking down the right side of the map. There's only uh, Tommy Squad here. There doesn't seem to be much on the field for Kimbo. And uh, actually, just bring up the match. That's he lost. Lost anything? Yeah. Uh, I don't think so. Units right. would show it. Uh, no. No. A capture point is being overrun. Here we go, Grenadiers. One with the LMG 42 upgrade. Of course, you have to go stationary for it to fire, but it's a hell of a weapon. Take it. Nice battle there for the central victory point. New machine gun crew. Tommy to go within the garrison to keep that munitions. Here comes the Spy Hunter, the Spy on Spansig scout car with that auto cannon. Not in a position to shoot, just wants this to do some fishing in the pond to catch some supper. First Grenadiers seemingly doing a good job of catching the munitions, so the Tommies have taken a more advantageous position to shoot them from closer range. Scotch and Nagano feeling really aggressive on this one. They really feel like crossing in the woods is their chance to shine. They have to play this way. Oh, this is nice. This is uh, going to be a retreat path block, I think. The pioneers go up and pressure the uh, Tommies there. There's a lot of infantry to run through. And uh, this is the kind of movement you need to be making uh, to get rid of squads that are too deep in enemy territory. Tell you what, though, they've, they're leaving time for reinforcements to be called up. Sentry round goes up. There's Tommies just... Yeah, there they are. And uh, penal battalions coming to save the day. <laughs> Much like the miracle of Dunkirk, these Tommies are going to live to fight another day. And there they go. It's high-level play, that was. It's all about protecting squads, protecting veterans, and protecting your manpower and best. Nice rifle grenade. He disguised it with a moving grenadier note. That's a very cool manoeuvre. Keep one grenadier sta stationary and let the other one advance and it disguises the rifle and grenade somewhat high level play in full effect AEC thunders forward forces away the 2-2-2 yeah, it is protected by this uh, pack 40 though so there's not going to be much luck for the AEC if it does pursue, tier 3's up for Soviets so Stu should be looking at the T-70 soon and we have a flank from Kimbo we do. We also have the cutoff currently as well. They do have the Western fuel, it must be noted, though. So Scotch is very good aggressive play in this early passage of play. Um, must be noted, he did utilise Nagano to help him with that. Yeah. So it was like a double team. I quite like that. It's really good to see. It's getting away because you realise that he was doing nothing until Nagano just let him capture that territory and then suddenly he became like this very aggressive oh here comes Kimbo though I tell you what the Tommies were just pushed around by the 2 2 but then they came the AEC now Nagano's coming in to back up his team because they recognise that Kimbo was going to come in strong just temporarily lost the MG42 and that little bit of veterancy had accumulated <laughs> oh, trying to get the uh, infiltration grenades on the retreat. No luck there at all. We have the Panzer II Lukes in the field now. Volks Grenadiers going through the centre. Can the Panzer II Lukes uh, deal some damage? Perhaps not. No, thanks to that little bit of green cover behind the wall. It's going to be safe. Here comes the 2 2 2. Very low health, uh, you know, but uh, we do have PTRS's. Oh, grenade. Oh! Almost decimated there. Do you need to chase? He is. The sniper was there as well. To be honest, he should have gone for it. Did you? Well, he doesn't know, does he? He just doesn't know. But uh, knowing what we can see, he should have gone for it. That's for certain. True sight can be uh, can stop a, a number of engagements that way. You don't really know just what's around the corner. Two, two, two. We'll leave this clean all around. It actually protects the MP42 in this case. We've seen a lot of that in this series. Couldn't quite protect it to its last score. And the Grenadier is only three man. However, there are, there are no squads from the Allies on the uh, line. I like that. I like you sucked it in or something. 
It's going to hit the second one by the looks of it. Oh! <laughs> oh! Very close indeed. Grenadiers could hit it yet. Gonna check out the Panzer II Lukes as it makes its way over to the left hand side. You know he's got to be careful of the AC, but of course we know it is not on this area of the map. I think he's waiting for reinforcements before he goes, and uh, that's a sensible uh, decision. The T70 comes in to get the scout car, and now it has to make sure it doesn't get fausted by the Grenadiers. His AC gun needs to oh. set up. He's got to. Which one does it choose? Faust off, hits, one more pack shot necessitated, but here come the boys, they're going to try and force the pack away. Got Tommy's firing, pack forced away, MG42, oh. and Grenadier, bite the dust. This could be a big win for the Allies. Here comes Nagano, Scott just lost some heavy resources oh. there, but so is Nagano now, thanks to the grouped up Tommy's. There were four squads behind that tree, that was a deceptively wide tree seemingly. Oh my word, they lost so much in that engage. I think they would just pull back to base and hit the left side of the map. I don't think they can actually uh, play against this. They're severely outmatched now. It's going to take a long time to get back from this engagement. Panzer II Lukes has a lot of work to do against infantry and also uh, trying to maneuver around the AT gun. The range on it is huge. Oh, could be one more shot. They definitely have vision. Will he attack ground and get the Hail Mary? No, he won't. But those uh, now nine, sorry, 18 Tommies as the homogenous gelatinated, incorporating, conglomerated tactical battle group. Oh, Had a great oh, showing there. The yeah, you see, nearly went down. There's still room to play. So we're, there is. We're, we're early on the VPs, which is the, the key thing. As long as the VPs aren't trickling down, there's still plenty of time uh, to play for things. So they need to get territory. We've seen the Ghana Scotch come back from worse, but um, that seem, so seemingly would finish off weak weaker teams. Mm. If this was any other game other than the Grand Finals against Nagano and Scotch, I would be saying it's GG. But I know what the Russian and the, the Fran Frenchmen are capable of. Here comes a Stuka. Could have done with that a little while ago when those uh, four Tommy squads were obliterating everything. But uh, <laughs> oh well, it's there now. Let's we'll see what it can do. Yeah, it's actually good to see them uh, working the map the way that they are. T-17's got to do some work on the left side, but the AT gun from Scotch is coming over to support. The Stuka is about to fire. This one goes through the center. Is this the long shot Oh we're my for? god, this could be the one! Oh. Sniper, maybe? Oh, that could have been it. That was Imagine a really if it was in perfect line with the Tommies. That was a really great idea, and very unfortunate. If they'd have got that, it would have been a perfect uh, turnaround. But of course, they have revealed the Stuka is on the field now. So that surprise shock factor. Has now been extinguished in the center. We've got uh, a good position taken by Steve and Kimbo. Nagano and Scotch are still well in this, though. It's mostly Scotch that's on. Good bit of sweeping there. They do a little squat. And it disappears. Take yeah. a little poo on that. They, they suck it up. I don't know how <laughs> that works. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Anyway. Grenadier's <laughs> behind the building there, they jump in it, say hello, jump out of it again, jump in it, and now they're suppressed, and there you go, that's Company of Heroes, high level play for you. <laughs> Look what's going on over here. <laughs> Yeah, it's, um, actually, the, the players have been... Uh, I, I get a sense that they're tired. The reason I say that is because of this, uh, which we see kind of everywhere at the moment. Uh, there's no more of this kind of finesse engagements oh, everywhere. Oh, because the AEC's coming in. The two... This uh, Panzer II, its days are numbered. One shot in. It needs possibly two more. Oh, Folks, Grenadier is threatened the Faust. Oh, it gets it! Faust is hit in. And uh, the Raketenwerf is firing, but here come the boys. Good kill. Yeah, nice machine. to even that out a little bit. And, uh... Ooh. Nice there. Natural. Derpine is being forced away. Scotch and Nagano are on life support. Remember, everybody, they are one game away from imminent defeat. Very precarious position to be in. Two, one down, and a best of five for the most money ever competed for in Company of Heroes history. Oh, oh! Could Do be a big it. Has he it? done it? He's done He's it! He's done it! Oh my God! That is obliteration of the British Army. Kimbo Mad Slice lost so many men there. Only one squad. But look at the amount of soldiers that writhed around in the woods there. <laughs> they were waiting for that moment. 
And uh, he's got to be so careful. He's going to blob like that. You're absolutely leaving yourself open to it. And then to actually press the retreat button. Oh, in a way, though, that could have been a lot worse. I think he got off he relatively got off. On, on the on the good side of that. Oh, four squads. Only one squad fatality. A lot of men bit the dust. So this will allow Scotch and Argano to get back onto the battlefield for certain. It's a well-placed mine here if the, uh, they try and push in close for the... STGs to be able to get anything done because of the mine. Enemy causing trouble. Trying to take one of our points. Yeah, bit of suppression. Grenadiers march on, trying to get the victory points back. Very importantly, they oh, are. Sniper's about to go down. Surely, surely. Is she is held together with duct tape. There's nothing left of her. <laughs> How is she running so fast? <laughs> no idea. That was a sliver. Sliver rather of health. Pixel of existence, and it's uh, she survived for now. We got here. One mine's being placed on the right hand side. It's a really good idea, uh, you know, when you're not being attacked and you hold the side of the map to lay mines because you're just going to continually harass the manpower of your opponent. It's good uh, to point out like top level players are doing this constantly uh, to make moving around the map difficult, and uh, and rightly so. Uh, we've got the Stuka here, I think, lining up for another shot when the barrage comes on. They've actually took two juicy targets here Ooh. with the AT guns. Lovely stuff. Grenadiers next to the Untergang. MG42 firing in the centre. MG34 waiting in the west. Tommy's grouped up. Here we go again. <laughs> here they are. Stuka's ready. Come on, Mr. Stuka. This will be an historic... Best of five series should the Stuka obliterate everything in its path yet again. Tommies are diverging. As good as it could have been there. I think he may have done better to predict something other than the retreat, actually, this time. because uh, Oh, Nagano, what are you doing? Oh, dear me, he Stun needed pilot. them. Yeah. He needed yeah. them. Now they're dead, because all these mines won't get swept anymore. Yeah. Here come, effortless for Kim Murray, to be honest. Here come the Strafniki through the center. We've got sappers coming in from the west. Kimbo's amassing. Elsewhere in the east, it must be said, Scotch is uh, capping many points, I can see on the tactical map, but the all the engagements right now are going in uh, Kimbo's favor, seemingly. We did just, by the way, have Stu think about building a tank. He does have the resources. He's got 900 manpower, 160 fuel. What is the madman thinking? This one's an ice too. Yeah, but he can. Yeah, I guess. Why build anything if you don't need anything? You know. Mm, he definitely needs something. <laughs> yes, <laughs> Scotch. Uh, uh, retreat. Negate mines directly in observation of uh, of the enemy forces. Very good. <laughs> Very good. Do you mind? I'm trying to sweep this mine. How frightfully rude. Get caught in the middle of it. Oh, this is a bit awkward. But um, I'm just gonna kick that over there. Battle of Alamein, they had to sweep with their bayonets because they didn't have minesweepers. They had to go at the dead of night and uh, poke through the sand slowly towards the German lines. <laughs> takes, a, takes a certain amount of testicular fortitude for certain. Oh! Do we have the Brumbear on the way that I just see? Scotch? Yes, we do indeed. We have um, Stuve still banking an incredible amount of fuel and manpower. Can I go down to tier 2? Okay, well, I see what we're say seeing here. So, as Soviets with penal planes, you don't really want more than three squads because the manpower bleed is quite concerted once you get to four. So he had to go to tier two to actually get something that costs manpower. I like that. That sniper wants the kill. Will it get it? No! She was too busy <laughs> getting shot at. That's no excuse. <laughs> I like that she let us know. <laughs> yeah. Oh. We've had the Brumbear named in chat. It is indeed Bernard the Brumbear, the one the legends foretold. <laughs> uh, he's a, an odd looking tank. He's an ugly bugger, isn't he? He's an ugly little bugger, but he's a uh, Stern Panzer Falls are frightfully good at taking out uh, infantry. Look, Scotch here is uh, going to start making a move again on the right hand side. Look how many mines are in this area. He's absolutely right to uh, run forward with the pioneers. The Brumbo is going to take some uh, some of the engagements. Oh, oh. Could in finish the him off here. Yeah. <clears throat> this is sensible. I think you know Axis still have a lot in them, even though they've uh, suffered a lot. 
they absolutely still have a chance to cap the map here, spreading out. Very, very good decision. Let's have a look at the tactical map so we can see uh, exactly what's going on. No contest on the right for a Minesweeper, and uh, if they bunch up on the left, the Brumbar is going to make short work of this uh, infantry build from Kimbo. And uh, Steve's gone for the SU-85. I think he was probably waiting for that first vehicle of the Axis so he could counter it immediately. Sensible idea. Maybe even obvious when you think about it. Infiltration grenades don't infiltrate a single thing. Grenadiers in the centre contesting that point. Oh god! They're racing to get out of the battlefield. I know who's going to win that one. It's the SU-85. It's a, a snail race. Like watching two trucks try and overtake one. One trying to overtake the other on an, the motorway. And you're trapped between the, behind them. <laughs> I just, there's so many mines everywhere. It's all bad for, uh, for these grenadiers. In fact, these pioneers need to be, uh, need to be kept safe. They can't really do anything on this side of the map unless those uh, pioneers are there. Sniper's having to be pulled over to this side. Where did the, uh, Stuka go? Oh no, that was actually the AVRE. Just took a shot. Oh! Hit a mine itself, the penal there. Ooh, Brumbear's under, in peril. SU-85 blaring. Aviori could finish this first grenadier off here. That's dead. Be really Surely. Like the oh, this one's going to die next. Come on, Nagano. You can't die to that, surely. Is it under reload? Yes, it is. That'll make sense. There we go. He must know it himself. Huge waves erupt there. That Royal Engineer didn't die. The other squad member was a little bit below your screen. Command Panthers on the field. What a surprise. I can't believe it. Nagano's built a Command Panther. This is fresh. <laughs> I, I wonder if uh, Steve and Kimbo were predicting this. Oh, ho, ho. AVRE shot. Killed some stuff. Fire, fire. five with some long range shots there. Nice entrance onto the battlefield for. Mr. Commander Panther. Th this is the combination of AT that is needed to deal uh, with the AVRE. And uh, even that may not be enough. AVRE is uh, so scary. Pyats on the uh, sappers. Make it difficult for the Command Panther to uh, front this. Uh, you must project infantry at the tank. Pyat. And uh, here we go, we've got the Grenadier in the centre, watching over a half-built mine. Penal battalions force him away, as does the Sniper. She's uh, attained better MC3 now. Very well done to her. MG42 in the centre, veteran 2 itself, just keeping units at bay, but not for long. Here come the Grenadiers, going to try and possibly double fire the SRE5, maybe. Not that it'll matter, because there's nothing to back it up at the moment. Oops, Sniper is uh, out in the open again. Do we get to see the shots now from the Vet3? Shots do connect, but is it enough? Pioneers ready for assignment. Oh, They're actually out of the range now of this uh, MG, so surely they can get up and take the shot. The uh, Stuka's coming in through the centre as well. Is it on the Sniper? No, it's on the retreat path. Not. In this case, at least. So everybody wants to know what's so special about a Vet3 Sniper. Vet2's better cooldown, minus 20%. Better reload, minus 20%. Better range plus 20, and then at vet three, it's minus 30 cooldown, minus 30 reload, and plus 25% five percent flare. So very nice. What's also nice is the AVRE with another squad wipe there. Yeah, it's uh, no longer a game where you can leave your support weapons on the front line. No chance at all. Pioneers fighting their way back to the right side. They're so wary of mines. That's the one thing that's keeping Scotch off from getting on this side of the map and, and getting a fuel resource which uh, allies have double of, and they've got things to bring out like the IS-2, which Stuve is uh, very, very close to. And uh, Scotch, do you know what, do you wonder if Scotch is just going to be forced into play the Elephant here? He's played Blitzkrieg every game. Uh, we haven't seen uh, Jaeger armor today, but this might be the game where it's required. Oh no. See something very horrendous making its way over to the east. North there, it's the uh, IS-2. Let's keep an eye on this command path, you're right there. Let's see what happens here. It is missing and there are Royal Engineers ready with the Piets. Here's the IS-2 with that 122mm cannon. <laughs> oh god, that's a bad retreat path. <laughs> Nearly hit the mine. 
Elsewhere in the centre, SU-85 watches over as the Penal Battalions keep the central victory point, allowing the Maxim to suppress. Pack 40 comes into position, but it's uh, much too late to oh. help out in that situation. Nagano has no army. Scotch lost his uh, pioneers, and so now runs the risk of mines being triggered on the right-hand side. I don't think... They've really got enough to win. Possibly not. Here comes the Stuka Zufus. Maxim! Loses a man, that's the least hype thing I've ever tried to pick up. Oh, you've had the core, of course. We have had the Brombear out. What do we see next, perhaps? Is it even time to get anything next? Because we've only got 99 victory points left as the IS-2 decimates that machine gun on retreat. And that is big. This could mean Kimbo and Stu are only 93 seconds thereabouts away from being the biggest single cash prize pool winners in Company of Heroes history, everybody. Oh, this could be the time they take down the AVRE. That's the hit they needed. The AVRE goes down. Is there a chance that they can get back in this? Not if the Panther goes down, and there it goes. Pirates get it, and the six-pounders get it. Needed that to stay alive, and it's a triple cap, still 72 remaining. Here comes the Sherman Firefly. It's all gonna go horribly wrong. Should Scotch and Nagana not get command of victory points, and they've had to throw in the towel. You have your victors of the Anniversary Classic. It's Kimbo and Stuve. Victory is ours. GG, I think, is the way to describe that series. A 3-1 performance from Stuve and Kimbo, the newcomers, uh, really, in this year in the scene, uh, forming together a great 2v2 team and taking the biggest single prize pool in KOTU history. Congratulations to them. What a game. What a, what a series. Shot. What a mm. tournament. And uh, it proves to everybody that practice makes perfect. Put in the hours and be intelligent about it and you can become the best team or the best player in the world, quite frankly. Let's have a look at the stats that uh, told the tale of the tape in that final game, that all-important game, and look at uh, the collapse of Nagano's <laughs> army at the end there. That was what caused them to throw in the towel. Yeah, just good play. You get a real sense from Steve and Kimbo. Both of them know the game very well. The builds were good. Actually, they were confident enough to go in with commander selections yeah. from the get-go. Utilize, you know, commanders that are good at the start of the game uh, and make a, a, a basis from that. So they've clearly done a lot of research into their their styles. So. I just, I, I genuinely see it. Obviously, good styles and good strategic uh, control, but that's like, for me, like a 7 out of 10. What was 9 out of 10 consistently for Stephen Kimbo for me today was just mechanical brute force skill. They won so many little engagements here and there, and it just really started to cost Nagano and uh, Scotch control. They just lost that control steadily. And there were big moments, yeah, like the Stukas of Fushi start to feel like they'll get back in it, but there's always this huge reserve of endurance and power that uh, Stumbo had held back. They, they just played, they were just the better team. Yeah. And uh, maybe just the better team today still, because uh, Nagano and Scotch, again, like throughout the tournament, they played amazingly. The, the semi-final series against Helping Hands and Dev M, they played incredibly well during that. Um, but not much to say about it, you know? It's like the old and the new. And uh, congratulations again, like Stuve and Kimbo uh, now can say with bragging rights, they are the best 2v2 team in, uh, in the world as of today, <laughs> as of this tournament. And uh, talking about the old and the new, we've got 4,000 uh, viewers. Why, you, why did you point at me then? I said, us, we're the oh. old, they're the new. <laughs> talking about uh, the 4,000 viewers on Steam right now because uh, this there has been never a better time than to get into this series. Company of Heroes is going places, and uh, that is not hyperbole. That is no exaggeration. Um, the series itself is going places, and Company of Heroes 2 has been around for five years now, and this game has been developed to the point of it being a true and awesome sequel to Company of Heroes 1. No better time to get it for free that's the base game, that's the campaign, the best two factions for my money. Also, all the Theatre of War stuff, all for free. 
And then there's some great DLC as well. Sega, great publisher. They put so much money behind Relic, who have really come into their own with their best IP, which is Company Heroes. This has been the Anniversary Classic. Five years going strong. I have been AE. You can catch all these games. I'll be uploading them throughout the week to give yourself time to uh, take them all in on youtube.com forward slash AECOH. You can cast, sorry, catch me and Dan's best work for the first time and the best time live on twitch.tv forward slash Stormless. And of course, today, we have been hailing from the fantastic 80 Hertz studio in the heart of Manchester. This place is world-renowned for its ability to offer something to AAA music recording artists, uh, film production, anything. In this case, uh, come here as tournaments. Yep, yeah, it's, it's a studio that can facilitate just about everything. You know, you only look through the window over there. You've got a nice little uh, quartet. <laughs> Orchestra <laughs> set up. Uh, uh, set up. So, yeah, it's, it's a place that can facilitate everything. But uh, what a tournament it's been. Uh, thank you guys for uh, coming and letting us host an amazing event for you. Uh, thank you to Sega for providing the uh, funding to this. I'm sure Kimbo and Stu, for, we can thank Sega on their behalf for uh, the money provided that they've just won. And uh, what a great time to be playing Company of Heroes to be uh, part of the game. Uh, look forward to uh, this week with the updates. We've got the commander revamps and uh, that kind of content. And uh, future tournaments, well, uh, we can announce uh, a little bit. We were allowed by Andy to announce that we will be looking into the third series of King of the Hill, uh, which comes around in the uh, the January time. So if you're a 1v1 player and you're looking for a, a weekly brawl out in the Coliseum of our best 1v1 players, uh, then do keep your eyes out uh, for that update. But... Uh, a hey, great cast with you, as yes. always. As yourself as well, of course. Always a pleasure. And always a pleasure to have so many fantastic fans turning out in droves. Always good stuff. Yeah. And uh, with that, thank you very much, guys. We hope you've enjoyed uh, this Sega and Relic-sponsored 2v2 Anniversary Classic cast. I am Stormless. I am AE. And uh, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you and goodbye. Victory is ours. I came ashore with my men on D-Day, an attack that took us to the borders of Germany. My surviving battalions were stretched thin and emplaced in sectors I command had deemed quiet. None of us were ready for the Ardennes. As soon as the clouds rolled in, so did the Germans.